Hi everyone, in this video we'll be discussing the challenge of IP overlap. We'll talk about what it is and how it occurs, we'll talk about why it happens, and we'll talk about a couple approaches to overcoming it. So let's start by talking about what IP overlap is and how it happens. First, I'll briefly define IP for the sake of anyone unfamiliar. IP and IP address are actually commonly used in the same way, even though they refer to different things. IP stands for Internet Protocol and refers to a network layer communications protocol. IP address is one parameter used in internet protocol, but people will often say IP and mean IP addresses, and this includes me. So to build on that, devices like servers and PCs and mobile devices, they all have IP addresses for communicating on a local network and out to the internet. Now, when you're running the network of an organization, a lot of planning actually goes into your IP addressing. Without going into too much more detail, you'll find yourself organizing areas, whether logical or physical, into blocks of IP addresses called subnets. So with that defined, let's talk about IP overlap. Let's set up an example here. Let's say we have a block of IP addresses for our servers in our private data center called 10.1.1.0 slash 24. That slash 24 is what's gonna be called a subnet mask. And again, without going into too much more of the details, it means that this fourth number here could be anything between one and 254. Now, let's say that this server over here, it's got an IP address of 10.1.1.10. From here, let's say a cloud environment has been inherited through an acquisition or edge services have been built out here already or a business development group has been doing some work inside of here, whatever the case may be. And the team that built it used a subnet of 10.1.1.0 slash 24, which isn't too uncommon. Actually more common would be using 10.1.0.0 slash 16 because sometimes cloud providers will insert that as a default subnet. And of course, they have a server in the cloud environment environment using an IP of 10.1.1.10. So what's going to happen now? When you go to establish connectivity between the private data center and the newly acquired cloud environment, if it wasn't apparent already, there's going to be a conflict here. These IP ranges clearly overlap and these servers specifically, their IPs are the same as well. So how do we go about fixing this? Well, the first approach sounds straightforward in that you could simply change the IP addressing of the environment that's being integrated. However, in my drawing here, I've only drawn three servers. In reality, these environments get quite large, which would make the change very time consuming and very complicated. And not only that, there can be a lot of interdependencies that need to be discovered and understood. IP addresses could be hard coded in all sorts of places that need to be changed. And even then, there's often interdependencies that are missed until you actually attempt to make that change. The most flexible option is gonna be using a reverse proxy to present services. This method configures a localized IP address or name representing the far side application in the local private data center. Something like F5 distributed cloud customer edges can be deployed as needed and host these localized IP addresses. This provides ease of management and transit setup because the customer edges will automatically join into the global fabric of the F5 distributed cloud and alleviate any of those burdens. So for my example, on this side, we'll have a local virtual IP address that represents the far side application. There's no need to set up any special VPNs or other links. When the traffic reaches the destination site, a network address translation will be performed on the source IP address to hide the overlapping IP to the destination and also force traffic back through the path it came. Now, once you have these customer edges deployed, you can actually start incorporating layer seven features. In this scenario, if you have different portions of the application that could be broken up, they could actually be moved to different sites and then traffic is directed based on things like the URI. So let's say slash guestbook is over here and then you actually have another site maybe that one hosts slash members. With your CEs deployed over here at the data center, your same virtual IP can actually have a rule for slash guestbook to direct that traffic over to this site, while also having another rule that directs traffic for slash members over to the other site. So that's just one basic example, but there could be other things like incorporating layer seven security policies. So I hope this explains what IP overlap is and how you can solve for it in a couple different ways. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, hit subscribe if you want to see more and otherwise I'll see you on the next one.